Come on in. We are, we are live on the World Wide Web. And if you saw my meme, uh-oh. If you saw my meme on the Lakeside page today, it's easier to say World Wide Web than it is to say WWW. So we say World Wide Web. World Wide Web. So we're, uh, Chuck's getting a picture of all of us, so put on your happy faces. Come on in, Teresa's here, that's all that matters. Uh, if y'all didn't know this, if you didn't know this, Tony, Chuck Hudlow got a job a couple weeks ago at a computer keyboard factory, but he got fired. Yeah, he did, he got fired, because he wasn't putting in enough shifts. <laughs> wasn't putting in enough shifts. Cindy, did you get that one? Boom, boom. Terry got it, he's like a, a wry smile from Terry Waters. That's as good as a guffaw. Come on in here. I see Arnie Newton boom coming in. I know it. Just, just cackling. They're just, they're just cackling. I'm, <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> Mrs. Harris. Oh. All right, find your way to your chair with your snack. And you can get a delicious snack and eat it. That way when, while you're eating your snack and I tell a joke, you can blow food out your mouth when you laugh so hard. That'll be fun. Uh, all right, I got, I got to write a little note down for myself. Not that I forget stuff. But I'm going to write it down anyway. Yes, ma'am. You sure can. You want to do it first or? I don't care. Okay. All right. All right, come on in. All right, Rupert's still glad handing people. So we gotta wait for Super Rupert. That's his new nickname, Betty. Super Rupert. It, it, it rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Super Rupert, I like it. I made that up, that was me. All right. Did y'all get yourself an oatmeal raisin cookie that Mary Hunt made? Oh, no, I was just talking about oatmeal raisin cookies. I wasn't saying anything. No, uh, no not yet. I don't, want to, I don't want to show off. All right, the Lawrence's, Lawrence's are here so we can start. <laughs> hey, if y'all didn't know this, my grandson, Cade, C-A-D-E, he's my oldest grandson, oldest grandkid. He's uh, 13. He's a teenager, believe it or not. So, he is one of them smart kids. He's one of them smart kids. So, we didn't hang out when I was that age. Because uh, I wasn't smart. But, he's in a bunch of extra classes. He does uh, robotics. And they also have, at Kaufman High School, they have an archery class. So, he's in, he takes archery. And he, he uh, qualified for state. If y'all didn't know that, he qualified for state. You know, I was going to do archery in high school. But it had too many drawbacks. 
Natalie, did you get that? Natalie, did you get that? Too many draw drawbacks? Archery drawbacks? No. She's embarrassed for me. I, that's, it's okay. I'm used to it. All right. Uh, if y'all didn't get to go, men, I know men didn't get to go, but if the ladies didn't get to go, they had the uh, ladies' festival of tables this past Thursday, and there was a whoo 120 ladies involved and lots of tables and lots of decorations and lots of fun, and Marty Scholler spoke. And the youth were the servers, the youth mission team, I guess, were the servers. And thanks to y'all's generosity uh, through gratuities for the youth missions team servers, they raised $1,900 to go to, uh, that's good, $1,900 to go to Kentucky Big Creek Mission Camp. Is that right? Something like that. All right. So y'all did good. And a good time was had by all, from what I understand. Main thing is I didn't have to clean it up. So I was super happy. See, speaking of signing things up, I'm going to start it on this side this time. This is the treat calendar for the next three months. If you haven't signed up for treats before, sign up for treats. Put your telephone number down. Karen will call and remind you during the week. Wait, not this week, but or not last week. But she was busy. But uh, sign up for a date. So we can have a treat for Sunday. And that's going around the room. Uh, let's see. Easter schedule, people. That's coming up pretty, pretty soon. Uh, April 17th, I think. So just keep this in the back of your mind. We are going to do a sunrise service at Omer's Ranch. That's 6 o'clock, something like that. Where's Omer? 6.30. 6.30. So you've got to go to that. You don't have to go to that. <clears throat> but we drive up there. Chairs are provided. Is that correct? No, bring your lawn chairs. Bring your lawn chairs. Okay, bring your lawn chairs. Coffee is going to be there, right? That'd be coffee. So that's the most important thing. Uh, after that, we have 8.30 Sunday school. Easter Sunday morning. 8.30 Sunday school. Because they're changing service to 10 o'clock at the park. Or as we call it, Mike Means Front Yard. So, he lives right across the street, so if y'all need to use the bathroom, <laughs> run over there. He'll, he'll fix you up. <laughs> so, that's Easter Sunday. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Plan your day accordingly, okay? Uh, treat sign up. March 20th, which is not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that, Karen is doing Know Your Enneagram Number class. And if you've never been to that, it is tons of fun. Marsha's thinking, oh, I am so mad at you right now. It doesn't matter. You clear your calendar. Bring them with you. Get them here. Bring them to the class. <laughs> so it's, uh, you want to learn your number because it tells you what motivates you to behave the way you behave. And it gives you the grace to accept people the way they are. So I'm, this will be my 15th or 20th class to come to. and <laughs> I still don't have the grace to let people be who they are. They need to be who people like me, you know. Isn't that right, darling? They need to be like us. We're ones. We're ones. Phyllis, Fortenberry, Darlene, me, Kay Simmons. And one is the best number. Sharon? Sharon Green, number one. She's a one. You're a one. Anyway, she looked at me like, huh? What are you talking about? Okay, that is March 20th. It'll be after the second service, 1 to 5. We'll have pizza for $5 or something like that if you want to do that. Wow. Uh, today, as you heard in first service, if you were in first service, is Pat Hanks and Dennis Groats last Sunday here with us. And Pat Hanks, Pat Hanks wants to say something. I'll catch you, though. I just want to say thank you all so, so very much for last Sunday and for the plaque or the, the picture you gave me and all the signatures and all the cards. And, you know, people say thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure. Everything I did was because that's where the Lord put me. 
So you all bloom where you're planted, and I plan to bloom where I'm planted. I've told several people, I've started praying, Lord, put somebody around me that needs me, and I said, I apologize. Put some friends around me, and if they need me, I'll be there. So you all do the same. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for all the blessings that you have allowed me to do. The visitations, the and you know, I look back at the little books that I had for the prayer, and it's been over 10 years, believe it or not. Some of y'all are new here, and you don't know that, but I've been hanging around a while. So you all bless the Lord, oh my soul. So bless you all as I go, and I'm not looking in the rear view mirror. Okay, don't forget, men's Bible study is Wednesday, down the hall here, 250. We're having good crowds. Carl's doing a fantastic job with our Bible study. So, and about 100,000 more Bible studies, and we'll catch up with the ladies. <laughs> so, that's good. Thank you for that. Maybe not. Yeah, Carl can last that long, yes. Treats today were brought to you by Maureen Hudlow and Mary Hunt. Thank you for those. Good stuff. We got birthdays this week. Did you know that? We got, I think I, Dalla, where's Dalla? Did I say you had a birthday last week? Yeah, it's this week. Dalla's birthday's this week. Mary Lou, is she here yet? Mary Lee Vickery's birthday's this week. Same day as Dallas. And Jerry Youngman, who's in Kaufman right now, messing with his new house. His birthday's the 8th also. And then Wanda Moore, she's not here today, but her birthday's on the 9th, March 9th. That stuff is what I get off of the newsletter. Karen's going to hold up a demonstration letter. It's still back here on the back table. has fun stories and anniversaries, birthdays, Bible studies, all that stuff. Information you may need. So you can get one of those if, if you don't have one already. There are no anniversaries this week. Not a lot of people got married in March. Just the weird ones. <laughs> Where's the Weeses? <laughs> Pat's like, <laughs> hush. <laughs> I forgot mine. Uh, visitors today, we have David and Tracy and Natalie McNair here with us. That's David's son-in-law and daughter. Daughter, son-in-law, daughter. Good. And they're here from Conway, Arkansas. Conway, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, new members, official new members, uh, Ed and Jennifer Lee, wave for us. They joined the class. And then, Laura George, Laura George, just wave. That's a, we're not going to make a big deal out of it, but Laura George is here. She joined our class. Y'all get by and say hi to her. So that's fun. We're, we're growing every week, and that's pretty neat, isn't it, Mary? Yes. Okay. I think that's about it. Uh, huh? Oh, Ronnie and Regina are official again. Yeah. Ronnie and Regina Ward. Say hi to them and welcome them back if you, if you weren't here last week. What else do I need to know? That's it, I guess. Is that it, Karen? She gave me the thumbs up, Rupe. Oh, gosh. Next week? Oh, gosh. We've got to spring forward next week. I apologize. Or we can move to Arizona and, or Hawaii. <laughs> Wayne Carter. Wayne Carter and I were talking about that. Wayne's here. Wayne's here. Yeah. Right. It's Wayne's world, and we're all just living in it. <laughs> but uh, we were talking about which states. It was a trivia question. Which states have the no daylight savings time? Arizona. Arizona, Hawaii. There you go. So we can either move to Arizona or Hawaii. Which one would you like to go? Oh, cool. <laughs> all right. All right, I got to get Rupert started because we're a little bit behind. Not us. Certain people in the service are a little bit behind. So, Rupert, do you know? <laughs> do you know what the weakest part of a car is? Uh, the weakest part? The weakest, weakest part, part of a car. Y'all help me out. Uh, Support it, system. It's that, it's that nut behind the steering wheel. <laughs> Natalie? Natalie? She's like, leave me alone. I want to go back to Conway. 
That's too many drawbacks, right, from the archery? <laughs> drawbacks. Good morning, church family. How's everybody? So good to see so many smiling faces here this morning. What's been going on this week? John, what about you? Oh, same old stuff. Same old stuff, huh? Yard, yard work. And yeah. Oh, trying to wake that yard up again. Oh, yes. It's time to go again. Yep, yep, yep. Grass yes. is beginning. The weeds are getting better. Weeds are really doing well, aren't they? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Well, this morning we're talking about, uh, again, uh, miracles of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and uh, we're uh, tuned in to the uh, book of John. We've been talking about John's miracles, and we've alternated. And this morning I'm talking about uh, re recalling the story, the glorious story that we've all heard, Lazarus. Lazarus, coming back from the grave. Oh, me. What do we know about Lazarus? We don't know much, but what do we know about him? Never a recorded word from Lazarus, is there? I don't think so. He just is there always, but he's always with the women of the house. And who are the women of the house? Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha and Mary, they always have plenty to say. And they're recorded in the Bible. He couldn't get a word in edgewise, Teresa. <laughs> Michael, you ever feel that way? Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He was quick on the draw, wasn't he? <laughs> so he's got, you know, all, uh, we don't know for sure, but <clears throat> how old do you think Lazarus is? No right or wrong answer here, but they're never recorded in the Bible. Is he older? Is he younger than the sisters? What do you what do we know? We always get the feeling that old Lazarus must be a lot older than the sisters. But, you know, they're sisters. How old's your oldest sister? Yeah. Lazarus. Lazarus. That was Zacchaeus. 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 He got the wrong person. It was Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was in the tree. Yeah, the sycamore fig. I was thinking there. Was a, so, how many brothers and sisters do you have? You know, you start thinking about that. Lazarus and Mary probably, uh, I always get the picture of uh, Mary and Martha probably 20-ish, uh, 20-ish. But they're living in the house, they're sisters. So, even if, it were, if, he, if he was an older brother, goodness, is he 30 years old? You remember when we used to think that 30 was over, way old. Can you believe that? Yeah. My goodness. But that's the way kids are. Three kids, Lazarus, and we don't know what Lazarus had. He might have got a bad case of uh, COVID-19. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Lazarus, family, and Bethany, where he lives, or where the house is, is there on the map, there. Bethany and Bethany, do y'all know what Bethany means? Bethany means a house of bread. And Jesus comes there and he will stay with those, with the, that family, with the two sisters and brother, and it becomes a frequent stop. Anytime Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, you notice he always stops at Bethany. Good friends, close friends. And he gets to know those girls, and the Bible says that he loves Lazarus. And he gets to, they always have a conversation. None of them are recorded in our Bible, but he is fluent with the Lord. Wouldn't you like to have that relationship? Wouldn't you? Can you just imagine? Lazarus had the opportunity to know and to talk with the Lord frequently. They're in the house in Bethany. So what are some of the things that our Lord likes or when we receive, see him in the book of John, 
He said that I am the bread of what? I am the light of the world. He said that I am the good shepherd. He said I am the gate, meaning the sheep will go through him. He describes himself a lot of different ways, but the way that our Lord and Savior really recognizes his earthly home, his place that he is at during his ministry, is right there with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. How many times they're going to get a chance to stop there? Bethany is only, my goodness, from Jerusalem to Bethlehem, you see this is, this is some six, seven miles to the south. So Bethany is just, just a few miles. Can you imagine like going from, uh, if it was three miles, that would be like living at the back gate. Jesus is at the front gate. Or the house separated, or Jerusalem. Close. All the time. Well, this morning's story starts off with uh, Lazarus gets sick. Lazarus is sick, and they make a message, and they send the message to the to our Lord, I can see Mary, Mary and Martha scratching out a, well, they must be on the computer doing an email, right, this day and time. Lazarus, your dear friend, the one that you love, is sick. You need to come. You need to come to him. So the sisters are saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said the sickness is not going to end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God would be glorified by it. Jesus is with his disciples. Where are they? All the theologians say that he's probably on the east side of the Jordan. But if he's on the east side of the Jordan, he's no more than a day's journey away. But yet, he doesn't go to him immediately. So the sisters are taking care of Lazarus, and his health is spinning out of control. And he is with his disciples, and the disciples want to know, Lazarus, you say you, we can't go back there, because the last time we were there, well, you, you almost got stoned, Jesus. They wanted to kill you the last time you were in town. Now maybe that's the right decision. We'll just stay away from there. And their Lord just says, no, no. Uh, Lazarus is just, he's asleep by now. And then they say, well, you know, when you get sick, what's the first thing you do? You get in bed, call the doctor, take a Z pack, <laughs> take some pills. You're trying to get well. And the disciples said, Well, if he's sleeping, that's a good thing. He'll get well. And the Lord said, No. He's he's not really asleep. Lazarus has already passed away. Lazarus is gone. And because a person is, is sleeping, uh, we know that, of course, we're, we're inactive during sleep, deep sleep. There's no conscience or surroundings or the passing of time. There's no pain, no suffering. It's like the, in death, there's no activity or consciousness. You know, when we go to sleep, we always expect to what? Yeah. We expect to get up. Lazarus is going to sleep. Lazarus has passed away. But yet our Lord waits an additional two days to get there. He's been in the, he's been gone now. He's passed away for four days. His sisters are there. 
and their story this morning zeroes in on that time when, very similar today, when we've lost a loved one, there's always those whys. Why did he have to die so young? And why didn't Jesus come here? And why, if he was able to heal the blind man, why wasn't he able to, to come? Why, why, why? You ever been there? We get so many questions, so many different things. Our minds start spinning. Oh, we're wondering about why. What could it have been? What could we have done different? And the family is there. And Mary and Martha even asked Jesus on his arrival, why didn't you, why weren't you here? Martha said, if you'd have just been here, my brother wouldn't have passed away. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection of life. I am the resurrection. Do you believe in me, Martha? And Martha, you know the one that's always busy in the household? The one that always seems to have a, a agenda set up? Busy as she can be, she said, I know that you are the Messiah. I know that you are the Son of God. And I know that the Lord will give you anything. But you see, my brother is deceased now. He said, well, he's going to, write, he's going to write, come back again. And she said, I know he'll come back at the end of time. At the end of the age, he'll come back. Never realizing the power of our Lord and Savior, is he? Mm -mm -mm. Very somber story, and John, where the sisters will come out, each one, and ask him those why questions. People from town have come out to mourn and to be with the sisters on the loss of their brother, just like we do these, this day and time. When we lose somebody, they're comforted by people that come. Jerusalem being as close as it was to Bethany, people came out to see Mary and Martha. Oh, they've lost their dear brother. I personally think that Lazarus is around 30 years old from reading different things. Mary and Martha, I think they're a little bit younger. I think they're in their 20s. I don't know that. That's just reading a lot of different, uh, that's reading a lot of computer talk, isn't it? Yeah. Different, different sermons, different theological sermons on the deal. We don't know how old they were. But I think that uh, he's a young man and he's passed away. People are coming there and they've got to always, when you always have a, a situation like that, all of the whys are there. Why did he have to pass away? Oh, he was too young to do this. Oh, the hardships of life. All those different stories that come up. And yes, we do that today, don't we? But there's also people in the crowd that were asking, well, he could cure a blind man. Why wasn't he here if he was loved so much? He could do this, all the different stories that we could hear that he could feed 5,000 people on a mountainside. Why couldn't he be here to help this one individual? Why, why, why? The whys of life, they're no different today. A Jewish Celebration of life at that day and time, you had professional mourners that come out and wail at the graveside. They still do that today if you watch television. And when there you have a Jewish funeral, you have professional mourners that will come out and wail for you to show your deep anguish. Everybody's wailing. Lazarus is in the tomb, he's been there for four days. Jesus weeps, but his death will not end in despair. 
friends, they would turn around and they will say, where have you put him? Well, he's in the tomb over here. There's a big rock that's rolled up by the door. There's Martha again. What did Martha say? He stinketh. He stinketh. Yeah. He's been in the tomb. He's been there four days. Can you imagine? He's wrapped up. They sure they've anointed him with perfumes. They put him in grave clothes. He's wrapped from his head to his foot in cloths. He's ready. He's he's been buried in the tomb. He's been in there four days. Jesus says, "Roll that stone away from that door." And as they roll that stone away, Jesus lifts up his hands to the heaven and he says, "I am asking, thanking you, Lord. I can do this without really a prayer." But I'm doing that for the sake of the other people here so that they'll realize the power that you have over life itself. And he says, what's those words? Lazarus, come forth. Come out of there, Lazarus. And I want you to know it's a good thing that he said Lazarus. Because the power that we've got if he hadn't called for Lazarus to get up out of that graveyard, what would have happened? <laughs> He'd have brought the whole yard up. That's the kind of Lord that we serve today. Lazarus comes forth out of that grave site, out of that cave, still wrapped in those funeral clothes. Don't you know that would have been a great celebration? Now, here's the thing that I notice is that at that day and time, well, I've got a couple comments here, but he was in there for four days. Jesus waited two days. Well, there was a, a, a Jewish belief that if a, I guess we would call it a, in, within three days, a person still, their spirit inside their body has, has a right or a, a way, I'm, how can I say this? They can come back to life. Their spirit can come back in three days. That was the Jewish belief at that time. But if you waited four days, there was no hope. The spirit is gone. The body is either in heaven or hell, and that's it. It's a, there's no, four days is way too late. It's kind of like, uh, what do we use these days? Uh, the term, you ever heard of a, a dead ringer? What is a dead ringer? Play horseshoes? Yeah, that was really the meaning of a dead ringer was that in a funeral parlor when the person was in the casket, if they could ring the bell, you need to open the, the coffin <laughs> and let them out. That was the real meaning of a dead ringer. Betty, Betty, you ever hear that story? I know that she probably heard of that. There was no dead ringer here. It was four days that our Lord had, Lazarus had gone for four days. So our Lord waited four days to show the people that it was a hopeless case. Otherwise, they, you know how people are. You say, well, he was, he was sick and they, they made a mistake on him and he was in that cave. But he really wasn't dead, was he? He was very dead. He was four days dead. He was four days, and like Martha says, he probably stinketh. It's hot. 
the climate there. Did they do any embalming at that day and time? It was hopeless. It was a hopeless case. And yet Jesus wept at outside the stone. And he, why did our Lord weep? He loved him. It's not going to end in tragedy, tells his disciples. Our Lord told his disciples before they even made the trip, this is not going to end in death. He knew what he had the power to do. Do you ever think that maybe Jesus wept because he knew that Lazarus was already on the other side? You're already, I'm already pulling him out from being that much closer to being home. And he has to stay earthbound. Jesus weeps. Lazarus comes out. And there's a great celebration. Now, what's going on with the disciples? Doug, what do you think, figure the disciples are thinking? Gee, I don't know. What's he going to do this time? Yeah. And the disciples, said, I, I, it's a good thing, Jesus told his disciples earlier, it's a good thing for you that I'm not there. Because if Jesus had been there and run right as quick as he caught, and he caught him there on the day number two, and he was sick in bed and right on the verge of death, and he cured him, what would people say? Oh, he was sick, but, you know, he got Buddha. Isn't that the way we are? After a great miracle is performed, people can always rationalize, explain, Explain it away, a miracle. My, oh my. There was, but the truth of the matter is the Lord, he receives the praise through the Son of God for this miracle. And his disciples are strengthened that they know for sure that he is the Messiah. And if they had any doubts, even though they've been traveling with Christ, goodness, can you imagine bringing somebody back from four days in the tomb? Mm, mm, mm. A miracle. And our Lord is justified, and He justifies me and you today. We all have miracles. We all have miracles in our lives. One day, I want to give you a, a testimony. I received a miracle. I was spinning out of control. That's another day and another time. You'll have to come back. <laughs> Questions, comments, observations? Sure. Mm -hmm. Explain Jesus coming back on the third day. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, they had verification that Jesus was dead when they shoved the spear in his, his side, yeah. and water and blood came out separately. So they knew he was dead. You yeah. know, you're not so sure about Lazarus because nobody confirmed it. Probably. What do you think, Rick? I think he's four days dead. <laughs> Like David said, what David David Simmons, where's he at? Isn't he? Oh, Lord, he's, David. he's back there on the back row. David said, Lazarus told Jesus, he said, I came back in four days, I bet you can do it in three. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, comments? So you're saying that the soul Yes, he died. When he died, he died, he died, he died, he died, and that soul went to heaven. That was their belief. Yep. 
But that doesn't necessarily, that's true. No. No. That was just the, the, the Jewish belief at that time. Jesus fulfilled that so they would believe. Yes. 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 Okay. yes. I guess it makes up application wise is that when that day comes up for me and you, and it will because it's inevitable, and that we are placed there, there, are we for sure that the next time we open our eyes where we'll be? Then you need to know. And you need to have the comfort here on earth, here in Hideaway, Texas, or Conway. <laughs> Conway, that's real close to David's burgers, isn't it? Yeah. 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 We discovered a jewel. Yeah. We need to be for sure that we have that blessed assurance that when our eyes are open, we'll be in the presence of our Lord God Almighty. Matt? With Lazarus? With Lazarus. I don't think so. Um, well, I, I, I think after four days. After four days. I think it was still a miracle. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I mean, it wasn't that, possibly that uncommon for the Jews to understand that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody knows. 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 How about a near-death experience? Well, yeah. Huh? Near death, but the object of coming back. Yes. I mean, near death is what she had. Yep. But she did not. Did she die? There was no fall. There was no fall. For a whole long time. Eventually, But the, the Lord's there. hand reached down and had you somebody at the door. He had an angel at the door. Angel at the door. And, and, and the paramedics, there are angels and mothers. They were so happy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Teresa was going to get her back because she messed up her meatloaf. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Yes. See there, we've got, we've got miracles right here in the room. I, I was... Oh. And she almost she had no pulse. Excuse me. Barbara, can you share with us a little bit? Well, yeah. Teresa, oh. no, sorry. Teresa Eddy had called and said she was going to bring a meatloaf over. She'd made some little miniature meatloafs. Power and I meatloaf. never had one. She was going to bring it back. Yeah. So she started out of her driveway and came, I don't know how far she got and she thought well I'll just go on to the store and get some other things to go with it and come back so we just think that played into it but anyway so when she did come by I went to the I walked to the door she walked to the door uh -huh, I walked to the door and she was handing me the meatloaf and I said and I think I'm gonna faint and i would never fainted before but something just came over me and you'd have to talk to her, but she says I hit the floor hard, and uh, she called for Pat, who had been sick and was uh, asleep yep. in the back bedroom, and uh, said, bring me a wash rag, Barbara's fainted. So I think he got a rag or something, but anyway, she realized that I wasn't breathing. And so she, she had, the week before, seen uh, uh, on one of the morning shows yeah. how to do CPR. CPR. And so she just immediately started CPR on me, and uh, Pat called the paramedics, and they talked over the phone about what she should be, but she was doing the right thing. And then uh, after, the, after the paramedics got there, which they both say was a long time, 
they had to use the paddles three times and they there was no pulse for a while but finally they got one they felt like they could travel with and uh took me to the hospital and i lived through it all and they did. <laughs> it was so she it was definitely a miracle that she miracle. was at my door yes Lord's good. Perfect. The timing was right. And thank you for your action. I'm so glad she's a neighbor. And, <laughs> and it was, and I here want you to know it was just coincidence that she, coincidence now, that she had just seen the CPR training, huh? No. No, no coincidence. No. None. No. And then, you get to you get to to hear that story this morning about the action right here in Hideaway about what the Lord did in her life through Teresa. Praise her Lord. We got to go. Well, we got to do a let's let's have a, a word of closing here. Precious Father, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for the story of Lazarus, and Father, thank you for the uh, understanding and the, and the satisfaction that we get of knowing that one of these days when the inevitable happens to us, that the next time we open our eyes, we'll be in the comfort of you. Father, help us, or anyone that doesn't have that security, Father, help them to, uh, to come to us to, to, uh, and help us to be there to to tell them uh, about, about salvation of life. Father, be with us through the day. Help us in everything we do and say, and we just give you all the praise. In your blessed name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rupert. Good job. Good message. While uh, Joy's coming up here for prayers, uh, Ed Lee and Jennifer, we're going to take a picture after the class, if that's okay. Doug will take your picture. And Laura, we need to take your picture. It's okay. We won't put it on the internet, World Wide Web. <laughs> and who else do we need, Karen? The wards. We're going to get your picture again. You look great. Fantastic. Super good. <laughs> Tony, do, do we have your picture yet? Do we have your beautiful picture yet? <laughs> and if you'll stay after class, too, if you want to. I won't make you. You want this or that? This might work better. Okay. Yeah. For short people. Okay. Morning. Morning. And I really didn't know the difference between Zacchaeus and Aaron Lazarus. I was just trying to see if y'all yeah. were awake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where my it's mind all went. About the fig tree. <sighs> it's like the fig tree was in there too. <laughs> I don't know where my mind went. But anyway. Um, okay. Praise. I'll try and do this fast. Uh, praises this morning. Uh, the Opries have a friend who had a very successful cancer surgery, so they're very grateful for that. Um, deaths in the family just this past week. Russ Sword's brother, Jack, died. We need to keep them in our prayers. And Laura Eaton, Lou Eaton, I'm sorry. See, my mind's not here this morning. Um, uh, they're her daughters, uncle and grandfather, both passed away within really just a short time of each other. So she's asking for prayers for her daughters as they go through this. Um, those battling cancer, uh, Carl Moss had a complication last week. We were out of town last week, so I may not be up to date on everything. So if you have something, let me know. Um, I was going to see if Ann was here in Hamilton. I haven't talked to her. But Brenda is here with us this morning. Brenda Elshner. Good to have her here. And from what I'm hearing, their reports are good. These are our folks that are battling cancer. Uh, Caroline Sample, I think, is due to have chemo this week. Or she had it last week. I need to double check on them. Uh, Jet, where's the Vadens? Vaden's not here, so we don't get an update on Jet. And then um, Bob Curtis's sister, uh, Kate, has uh, brain cancer and need prayers for them. Uh, as far as folks in the hospital, the only one I'm aware of right now is Jan Abbott, and I'm assuming she's still there and still waiting on answers. And then the other folks, uh, Connie Newtonboom, uh, is still waiting to have hip surgery. 
Arnie is here today, and he's doing better. Um, there you go. That's a praise on that side, because that's the second pacemaker to see if it can not reject it with infection. But he said he's doing better. Uh, Nancy and Bob Jones' family still need our prayers. Aline Collins and Sam. Uh, John Russo, the Sorrels' son-in-law, is still needing prayers. And Angie, how about your eyes? But he and his um, team have agreed to work me in on March 29th to look at my vision problems. So I'm thankful for that, and I pray and ask you to pray for his help with my vision problems. Thank you very, for asking about it. Very good. Are there any others in the class that I've missed? Like I said, we were traveling this week, so I'm a little behind times. And I, may I say? Yes. Uh, And you pray. But we need every day to pray for the people there, for our country, and for God's mercy on all of us. Yeah, asking for the prayers for the people of Ukraine and the government of Ukraine, the governors, leaders around the world. That was next on my list. Okay, does anyone else have anything? Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father, we give thanks to you this morning. We have praises of successful cancer surgeries for folks. We have uh, some folks that have lost family members this week that have gone on to heaven, and we just pray that you'll comfort them and uh, wrap your arms around them, Lord, and let them know that they're not on their own. And then the folks that we have that are battling cancer, we just pray that you'll give them an equal share of strength each day encourage lord and just help them know you're with them no matter what and the folks in hospital and the rest of the folks we have on our list lord um, that are waiting for surgeries or trying to recover from surgeries um, just an extra heap of help of uh, just your strength for them lord and and peace and comfort as they go through their days lord we pray as we go through this week we remember to keep these folks in our prayers and that if you have us to do more than pray for them this week help us to know what you need us to do and help us to have the strength to do it we just ask that you'll be with us and guide us we ask these things in thy name amen all right don't forget your name tags put your name tags back uh picture takers will be right over there with doug roger dennis